Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we've had a little bit of a change here um, in the YouTube studio of Living in Racine. As you can see, I'm going to show you right here. We have now we have three cameras. So we've got one there. Hello, right here. And we have one over here, which is right on top of my screen. Hello, right there. But now we also have a third camera and that camera is right here. But it doesn't really matter because whichever camera that you're looking at, I know that you're going to get some great information today. I did promise you that we were going to have the year 2023 in review stats wise for you. So you could see the whole picture of everything that was going on in the city of Racine for our stats and the year in review 2023. And I told you I'd have it by the end of January. All right. It is January 31st. It is after nine o'clock tonight, but I'm going to have this dropped onto the, onto the channel and I'm going to have it on the channel before it hits midnight tonight. So stick around and we'll find out some stats and how it can help you. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Well, here's our far away camera, so you can kind of get a better view of that. Of course, we can always come up closer and even come in closer yet. So um, welcome back. And we're really having a lot of fun with the cameras because we've rearranged the studio. So now we have a ton more space in here. I wish I could actually show you, but that would mess up all the cameras for tonight. So anyway, but let's get into it. Let's talk about, well, maybe not there. Um, let's talk about what we want to do and what we're going to see here in 2023 or our re our year in review for 2023. And we're going to st uh, step off really quick here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the average list prices versus the average sale prices. So let's take a look at this first. So our average list prices by the end of the year, we can see all of the stats across there, but you can see that it was really steady this whole year. Actually, there wasn't a whole lot of fluctuation except a little bit in December. And a little bit in November and quite a bit in December. Um, and they weren't for the positive in either of those months. But you can see that overall for the year, everything was going really, really well. Our average list price in Racine for 2023 was 189 133.42. And the average sale price of 181 um, even, like absolutely flat, even. <laughs> like no pennies or anything on that, which is very weird. Um, so that is our average sold and list prices. What's interesting though, is let's take a look at the percentage of the average list and sold prices. So the list, the sale to list percentages. So basically what this says is not the pricing, not how much the average house sells for in Racine, but what is the average percentage. So when somebody lists their house, are they getting 100%? Are they getting over 100%? Are they getting under 100%, etc. So a few years ago, we were seeing people list their house for one price and then get over asking offers. But what we weren't seeing, and this is what nobody really talked about, they were like, Oh, yeah, we got over asking for our house, we got over asking, but they weren't closing. Because people were talking about when they first got their offers, but they weren't talking about what happened when they closed. So let's take a look because this average and this number is really interesting, I think. So for 2023, the sale to list percentages, the sale to list percentage was actually 99.63. This is actually a better percentage than it was previously. So if you were to look at this, let's take a look at it in a little bit smaller uh, thing here. So you can see right down here that the, uh, you can see, look at the spikiness to that. I mean, the sale to list was like really up in May down June, you can see the spikiness of the nature of this. And how you can see in October how there was a definite people were getting a much higher than last year. So anytime you see the blue up here, that is telling you that's the sale to list in 2023. And the orange on this chart is and I'll put this back up actually as a different chart, I'll put it up as a full chart so you can see it better. But the orange on this chart is actually from 2022. And you can see that people were actually getting less of a percentage of their list price in 2022, except in April and May. So April and May, they were getting more last year and January of 2022. But 
otherwise, every other month in 2023, we actually did a better percentage than we had in the previous year. And that's something you really should be paying attention to because that shows you precisely how much of a difference we've had. So people are actually getting more or closer to their list prices now than they were a year ago overall. And you can see that on the final one here, the year to date averages right here, this this one right at the end. I don't know if I can actually, nope, wrong hand, point this way. <laughs> that one right, let's see, not used to doing this. All right. That one right there, right at the end. That one, you can see that 2023 edged out 2022 by just a small margin. In 2023, we had 99.63%. And in 2022, we actually only had 98.90%. So I'll bring that up a little bit higher for you to see there. Um, so yeah, so that is actually really good information because we've actually gone up on our sale to list prices. Now, what does that mean? It means people are getting more reasonable. So let's take a look at a couple of other things here. So we've done the average list price. We've done the, um, we've done the sale to list percentages, but what about the solds versus new listings? All right, let's take a look at this one right here. The solds versus new listings in this chart um, what you can see is you can see that, um, let's see here, what are we looking at here? Oh yeah, you can see the sold versus new listings. In 2023, we actually had sold listings of 63 and in but what we really need is we need that orange line to consistently be above the blue line. That is how we will get back to a healthy market. So that orange line right there, which is the the new listings, we need that to always be above the blue. Now, the good news is that it looks like pretty much we oops, we it does look like let me get the right chart back up here and put that in there. It does look like if you notice here that for most of 2023, that orange line was above the blue line, but it did dip in May of this year. It also dipped in August and it dipped in December. We really need that orange line. If we're going to get back to a healthy market, we need that orange line to consistently and always be above the blue uh, sold listings because we need to have more listings come to the market than we have sold. Otherwise, that's when we get into a difficult time where we have bad absorption rate. So let's take a look at the absorption rate here as well. So if you see on the absorption rate, whoops, let's take that off. On the absorption rate, again, this is our absorption rate for 2023 is actually 0.89 for the whole year. And that's a problem. Our absorption rate in 2022 was actually one. Now, absorption rate means that you have less than, like one means one month. That's what a one means. So the problem is with this is that we need to have, um, we really need to have that line go above. And so the absorption rate being so low, we're actually below where we were at the end of 2022. That's dangerous. That means that in 2023, we actually had less listings and less solds. I mean, we had more sold or as many solds, but we actually didn't have as many solds. So we had significantly less listings in 2023 in order for our absorption rate to have dropped lower than 2022. So it's only by a fraction, but we really need our absorption rate to be closer to a three, not a one. So a one is kind of a dangerous, dangerous place to be. And one of the things that affects that, of course, is days on market. So let's take a look at the days on market here. And the days on market for this for 2023 were actually 21.07. And average days on market in 2022 was 25.07. So we actually had four days on market more for the average in 2022. Um we really, really, really needed that orange should be like, we should have the blue behind the orange. The reason the orange is behind the blue right now. And the reason I'm showing it that way is so that you can see how much the absorption rate or the days on market rather um, overscaled this year. So the problem is when you have less days on market. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. So first of all, let's get this chart off and there we go. And 
So here's the thing. What you need to understand about days on market is that when the days on market drop and the new listings drop, I mean, just to give you a really, really good look at this, I'm going to tell you what our average sales were. So our average sales in 2019 were 1,517 in 2020. And this is just for Caledonia, Racine, and Mount Pleasant combined. Okay. So our average sales for 2019 were 1517. Our average sales in 2020 were 1699, which is part of, which was the beginning. Only half of 2020 was the beginning of the rise in prices. It started about June, basically when the mandatory lockdowns in our market stopped, then the market started to get flooded. And so 16, uh, 1699 sold in 2020. Then in 2021 is where we hit the big boom of everything. And that brought us up to 1920, uh, 1941 sales in 2021. Now the 2019 sales of 1500, that's actually really closer to an average market. So 1699, okay, it's a little up, but not a lot. 1662 is what we hit for 2022. And that's again, you know, a little up, but not a whole lot. 15 to 1600 is right in a sweet spot of we that's a that's a good amount of houses to be listed. The difference was is that in 2019, or that's the amount of houses to be sold. The difference is in 2019 and early 2020, we had a lot more listings and sold. So those absorption rates were better. Here's the problem for 2023. And it's just pure and simple. If you haven't heard this before, here's the problem and here's here's where we need to fix it. We didn't have enough people list their house. Think about the average needs to be somewhere between 1500 and 1600 every year of sold to have an even okayish market. This year in 2023, we had 1259 houses sold. And there were very few houses that didn't sell. It's not like we had a whole bunch of expireds. No, we didn't. In fact, Russ and I looked through the expireds and there really were only about less than 100 for the year of expireds. So uh, an expired, by the way, is when somebody puts their house on the market and it doesn't sell for whatever reason. Um, so 1,259 that is shockingly low. That is why we are having such an inventory problem right now. That is why as long as that number stays low, prices continue to climb, but not in a healthy way, not in a way that helps sellers and not in a way that helps buyers. So what we're really hoping for this year is that we get back up to about 1500 solds and that we actually really want to see about twice that many listings. We really want to see twice as many listings as sold. And that would be good because that would mean it would be healthier. It means our absorption rates would go up to three to four months, which is really where everybody wants them to be. Because most decent sellers don't want to have to look over 20 offers on their property. Most decent buyers don't want to get so frustrated that they can't buy because they're putting in offer after offer. That's what we had in in 2021 and half of 2020 and 20, half of 2022 before interest rates went up. This year, interest rates are dropping. We've already seen a couple of drops. The Fed says it's dropping them some more in a couple, in a month or so here. And again, they say they're going to drop them again this summer. The thing is what we need, it's the interest rates are fine, but the the higher interest rates are not stopping people from buying. That's not what's stopping it. What's stopping people from buying is there aren't any houses to buy. So really, if we want to have a healthy 2024 market, people, you got to start listing your houses. You got to get them out there. You got to put put them out. Now, if you have a family and you're like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I don't want to list my house and push myself into a homeless situation. Well, here's a couple of options for you. First of all, we have the easy peasy plan uh, that we've developed with a lender that we work with. And what it does is it allows you to buy your second, buy your next house first, then, then move and then sell your, your original house. And it puts you, it gives you the money for down payment. And this is, if you have not refinanced in the last five years, there's a very good chance you would qualify for this program. So the easy peasy plan might be a way for you to do it. The not as good of a way to do it, but a lot safer would be if you kind of scout out where there are some rentals, then put your, like, put in a rental application, 
then put your house on the market. It's going to sell because everything is selling pretty quickly right now. Like I said, only 100 expired last year. So um, put your house on the market, get it sold, move into a rental, and then you have all the cash ready and you can take some of that cash to pay for your rental for as long as you need to. Maybe your lease is for a year or six months and you can then go into looking into the market for the house that you want to buy. Or some people are actually taking this and they're doing creative financing and creative loans and they are going for new construction. So they're taking the money, they're renting for a year or two while this new construction is happening and they're actually getting into their dream home which is an awesome option. But if you want to know more about any of your options, if you want to know the numbers for Caledonia and Mount Pleasant, I do have all of them. Um, in fact, I can tell you really quick that the average list price in, Cal in Mount Pleasant was 372, but the average sale price came out at 328. So Mount Pleasant, not so good right now. Um, the average, and same for Caledonia actually overall for the year, even though Caledonia finished a bit strong, their average list price was 412, 448, and they are average sale price was only 356. Now in the last couple of months of 2023, Caledonia did much better, but not so much for the year overall. But if you want to know any of the other stats for Caledonia or for Mount Pleasant, I've got them all here. Just drop me a line. You're going to see my email down below, Kimberly at TAMTHomes.com. And I will be happy to send that out to you. So hopefully that helps. And we will see you next time. Bye for now. If you got value from this video, do us a favor and click like. If you'd like to see more of the same, then subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any of our content. As always, we love to hear from you. So leave us a comment below and we will absolutely respond. We'd love to get your feedback. And if you have ideas for content that you'd like to see, we absolutely welcome them. Have a great day. Bye for now.